venom. From alien costume, to Spider-Man's mirror image, to becoming one of his greatest foes, this is the history of Venom. Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. We're going to go through all the hosts of the Venom symbiote and the action figures produced from each, but that's not all. We're also giving away this deluxe Marvel Legends Venom figure absolutely free. This is the definitive modern Venom, so watch for clues throughout the video so you can find out how it can be yours. Now, we're going to ignore temporary one-off hosts, or retcons to the original continuity. That means we won't be seeing you, big guy. We all know Spidey was the first to host the Venom symbiote, but the true origin of Spidey's black costume came from a 22-year-old fan named Randy Schuler, who submitted the idea to Marvel Comics of Spidey switching to a jet black suit with a blood-red spider emblem on the chest. Marvel's editor-in-chief Jim Shooter loved the idea and bought it from Shuler for the princely sum of $220. Seeing as how the Venom movies have brought in more than a billion dollars at the box office, I'd say that was a pretty bad deal. But Shuler's not bitter. He even collaborated with Peter David to tell his original story idea in a 2019 one-shot comic. It is no surprise that Jim Shooter jumped all over Randy Shuler's ideas for a black-suited Spider-Man, because not only was Shooter the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics, he was also working directly with Mattel on the Secret Wars toy line. Shooter also wrote the 12-issue miniseries, which included the debut of the black costume. So he had an eye for marketing, and he realized that another Spider-Man figure would sell. And so this is one of the earliest examples that we have of marketing really influencing the way that the comics were written and drawn. And it's obvious because this action figure came out right as the Secret Wars comic was ending. So it had to have been in production prior to the comic even coming out. So uh, really a great example of the synergy between marketing and the comics. And what a great figure. It has the classic five points of articulation. This is actually my childhood Black Spider-Man figure. I can remember the day my grandfather got it for me off the racks at Kmart. It still has a terrific paint application with that great white spider emblem. The only real difference is, as we'll see on subsequent black suits, there's a little notch in the lower part of the spider that's not here on this one. But I love this figure. I love how thin and athletic Spider-Man looks. Oh, just great stuff. And I don't care if it was meant to be just a, a marketing gimmick. This, this costume has stood the test of time and has become completely iconic with Spider-Man. Case in point, this figure from Metacom's Real Action Heroes line. So this is a 12-inch cloth costume figure that came out in around 1999, I would say. And it has some of the great articulation that you would expect from a high-end collectible import figure. But the thing that I really love about this is the mid-transformation mask. Look at that. You can see Peter's brown eyes being engulfed. Here's the symbiote climbing up over his hair and his ear. It just looks flowing and alive in kind of a cartoony way because you can see that the proportions, I mean, look at how huge these calves and feet are on this figure. It's really kind of a, a, a cartoonish sort of look with the giant, long, tapering fingers, but what an incredible mid-transformation sculpt that is. Here is probably my favorite of all the Spider-Man black suit figures. And this is the one that came from Marvel Legends and is on the same base body as the Pizza Spider-Man. I know that the brand new retro card back black suit is pretty great and it has terrific articulation in some ways better than even this figure has, but there's something about just how thin and long this figure is that really makes it stand out. Plus, one of the cool things about Spidey's black suit 
is that the webs came out of the top of his wrist instead of the bottom. And so you can get these great spidery fingers and these long tapering hands that you just don't get with your typical thwip hands. Plus, this figure has the much larger McFarlane-sized eyes, so it goes along with his appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 300 much more than the new retro body does. What a great figure. If you don't have this one, I highly suggest you seek it out. Hopefully it'll get re-released, because I do think that as of right now, it is the definitive black suit Spidey figure. But going back a little ways in time, Marvel Select in their Diamond Select comic shop only line, gave us a black suit Spider-Man that is a direct copy of Charles Vess, Charles Vess's artwork from the cover of the first issue of Web of Spider-Man, which, as we will soon learn, was a vital turning point in the saga of the alien costume. The first issue of Web of Spider-Man marked the end of Peter's time as the symbiote's host. After escaping from the Baxter building, the symbiote waited in Pete's closet for a chance to strike. After struggling with the suit, Pete ended up inside a bell tower, hoping the Sonics would destroy the alien. It did, but it left Peter unconscious and vulnerable. With its dying act, the symbiote pulled Pete to safety and dissolved into nothingness, thus ending the saga of the alien costume. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're just getting started. Disgraced reporter Eddie Brock, whose career was ruined when Spider-Man proved his best story was false, was hopeless and contemplating suicide at the very church of Spidey and the Alien's final battle when he was joined. Their combined hatred for the web-slinger magnified in each other. Together, they became Venom. I was reading The Amazing Spider-Man when Venom made his huge debut, and he was an immediate sensation. So much so that this action figure from Toy Biz's very first Marvel line, their Marvel Super Heroes line, made its debut in the early 90s, not long after the figure was created. He was definitely the newest character that was involved in the line. Most of the other figures were of... Iron Man and Cap and the Fantastic Four, but you had this figure in there. And I know that the body sculpt is a little bit dated and kind of reminiscent of the time, but if you go back and you look at some of Todd McFarlane's very first drawings of Venom, you'll see that this sculpt is actually more accurate than we might initially imagine. What a great figure. Look at all the detail that they put into that head. It's got the great spider emblem. And he is. He's, he's bulky. He's, he's got mass to him. He poses a threat to Spider-Man. Now, because my first experience with Venom was Todd McFarlane's original designs, this will always be the version of Venom that I see when I think about the character. And Marvel Legends gave us an unbelievably accurate Todd McFarlane Venom in the Marvel Legends line. It has that great Todd McFarlane head sculpt with the huge eyes and that giant smile. Not the glowing, glowering, you know, saliva dripping teeth, just that creepy, evil smile that Venom showed Mary Jane when he first appeared in his cameo appearance in issue 299. This is just such a great figure. He also is clearly larger. He's on a much larger base body than the symbiote Peter Parker that we saw. And that makes sense because it causes him to be a very, very imposing figure. And one of the things that Hasbro has done really well is giving us alternate heads. And this figure came with an Eddie Brock head sculpt. And man, let me tell you, this thing is straight out of a Todd McFarlane drawing. That brow, that nose, those eyebrows and the pinchy eyes. I mean, this is truly a Todd McFarlane drawing come to life. And speaking of come to life, I love how the symbiote tendrils are like flaring around his head mid-transformation. Oh, such a great action figure. But, not to be outdone, Mafex produced their own Venom action figure. And it has maybe an even more accurate Todd McFarlane head sculpt with a slightly open mouth and those pearly whites just glaring at you. He has that same bulky kind of squat bodybuilder type of frame that Venom had in his earliest appearances under the pen of Todd McFarlane. 
And this thing, because of its advanced articulation, can really get into some incredible poses. You can see that these shoulders have this butterfly joint that doesn't interrupt the lines of the sculpt, but will allow you to get him into those crunchy, you know, venom attacking poses that you love. If there's one negative of this figure, it's slightly smaller in scale than I would like. It looks good as a solo figure, but when you place it next to some of the other um, Mafex figures, he's just a little small for Venom, but otherwise an absolutely perfect representation of Todd McFarlane's vision for the character. The next artist to tackle Venom was Eric Larson, whose bulkier version was even more monstrous as he added Venom's now trademark tongue. Eric Larson took Venom to some new, horrifying levels, and that is best exemplified by this mid-transformation Venom from the Spider-Man Classics line from the year 2000. So this figure actually predated Marvel Legends, and while it does have a lot of the articulation that we've come to expect with ball shoulders and ball hips, this is really all about the sculpt and what a sculpt it is. Look at the, the smile on Eddie's face as this almost duck-billed venom mask is wrapping around his head. You can see the different striations of the muscles of his tongue coming together to form, you know, that hideous tongue that's like lashing out at you. He's got the teeth that are actually going all in different directions as they come together, and even some of that green saliva that was one of the trademarks of, of his time drawing the character. I love these super long figures. It just gives so much life and action to this figure. This is truly an action figure. Even when just posed stationary in your display, this figure seems to like be moving and writhing in the background. Now, here is that same Marvel Legends figure, but with the third head sculpt with the Eric Larson head. Now, this one has a little bit less defined uh, eyes. It's, they're a little bit smoother, but he does have the wisping tongue ripping out through the teeth. And again, that green saliva all over the place like we saw on the cover of Eric Larson's versions of Venom. Toy Biz did a lot of versions of Venom, particularly in their Spider-Man Classics line. He was clearly a big-time seller, and so they would include him any chance they could. And here is one of the more monstrous versions from that series. Just look at how huge that tongue is as it's like ripping back through the back of his head in this thick tongue curling coming out. You know, Toy Biz was never afraid to throw some weird articulation in, and so he's got these bendy fingers, which are pretty cool, but then he has these fixed hip joints, so he can really only stand in this kind of wide stance position. But I love the way that they use the wash on this figure to really bring out the colors and the black of this monstrous Venom figure. The next figure with the Eric Larson art style took it even a step further with an even more monstrous build, more rough-hewn texture, and an even more gargantuan tongue. This one wraps all the way around his chest. But what makes this one cool is the action feature. Because if you press this button on his back, the jaw actually pops open a little bit. So it's not working quite as well as we would like but the jaw will pop open if you press that thing. Then we have the second figure from Toy Biz's Marvel Super Heroes line of Venom. Now you can see clearly how far the sculpting has advanced just from these two figures. But what I love about this one is it's the perfect combination of the art styles of Todd McFarlane with the more human proportions, the gaping, open, smiling face. But then you get a little Eric Larson action because his action feature is this flicking tongue. So it's like the perfect transition between the art styles of McFarlane and Larson. Of course, when you're the most popular Spider-Man villain created since the days of Ditko and Lee, you're going to be featured in every animated version of the Web Slingers adventures. And such was the case with Eddie Brock's Venom. 
This is my favorite Venom figure from the Spider-Man the Animated Series line. Spider-Man the Animated Series premiered in like 1994 or 1995, and so Venom was really hitting the peak of his popularity as a villain at that point. And this cat figure really captures that. It's got the the muscular, big Venom body. It has the classic you know, seven points of articulation that the five inch line has. And it's got a really great animated head sculpt, which very much captures the look of the cartoon. But what makes this figure so special is the fact that this rubberized mask comes off to reveal an animated Eddie Brock head underneath. Oh, that is so good. Look at Eddie's little pin-sized head on that giant body. What a great, cool play feature for a toy from the mid, mid-90s. So, so cool. Now, if that's my favorite figure from Spider-Man the Animated Series, here is a Venom figure from the best Spider-Man cartoon ever made. Spectacular Spider-Man. This is the hulking giant Venom figure from that line. And Spectacular Spider-Man did such a good job of integrating all of the different comic storylines that had been written about Spider-Man and Peter Parker and his relationships with his supporting cast over the past 50 years. And they borrowed a lot of the ideas from Brian Michael Bendis's Ultimate Spider-Man series, like the fact that Eddie and Pete were uh, friends and they were both into science, and that's how they ended up around the Venom symbiote. So, really, really cool. I just love how tiny his lower body is with how huge his upper body is. I mean, look at these shoulders. Just look at look at the proportions of this figure. It is so great. Such a excellent cartoon version of Venom. And then, of course, we have the newest animated Venom figure, the PulseCon exclu exclusive animated Venom. And you can see on the artwork on the package is replicated where those highlighted lines that you saw in the 95 animated series are present there. It comes with two separate heads, the tongue head and, of course, the, the growling tooth head. Such great art on this package. This is the only one of these that I have, and I just can't bring myself to open it because it just looks so gorgeous as a packaged figure. I love it so much. Marvel realized they had a gold mine on their hands and quickly converted Venom from a straight villain to a lethal protector. And in a subsequent miniseries, found a new host for the symbiote, the Bride of Venom. Eddie's ex-wife, Anne Wying, bonds with the symbiote after being shot by the Sin Eater, and she briefly becomes a twisted, murderous she-venom. This Bride of Venom figure came in Toy Biz's 1997 Venom line titled Along Came a Spider. And what makes this one such a standout is this was one of the first lines that Toy Biz did that was aimed directly at the adult collector market. This didn't come with a bunch of play features. It wasn't in the same 5-inch scale as the animated series figures. It was its own thing. It was closer to 6 inches. It focused much more on sculpt than it did on articulation. And to be honest, this was a direct response to Todd McFarlane's Spawn figures. They had shown that their did exist a collector market that could be, you know, good enough at retail that you could produce figures, send them out to Walmart and Toys R Us, and they would actually sell. And so that's what we're seeing with this Bride of Venom figure. Look at how the mask is in like a half transformation zone. She's got that crazy green saliva that we've seen. She actually does have pretty good articulation, but it just creates that that sense of movement. And again, you know, this was the very beginning of the collector market of action figures, and it's pretty cool that Venom was right at the forefront of that. Earth X was a 1999 comic series about a dystopian future of the Marvel Universe, where May Parker, the daughter of Spider-Man, bonded with the symbiote to become that universe's Venom. The Earth X designs all came from Alex Ross, who was the creative director of the series. And the only way that you could get this figure 
was as a mail-in from Toy Fair magazine, issue 26 to be specific. Now, Toy Fair magazine was our best source of information about toys back in the late 90s. This was before really toy message boards, obviously before YouTube, and so we had to wait every month to see what was coming out. But they would have some of the absolute coolest mail-in figures. In fact, still the only figures we've ever gotten of Shadow Cat and Molten Man both came as Toy Fair Toy Fair mail-in figures. Now, what makes this figure so cool is that it's actually cast in red translucent plastic with black paint over the top. And what you need is a light from behind to really see how the illuminated figure looks. When you shine this light through, you get those red veins that really come through on the design of Alex Ross's Earth X Venom. Such a cool figure and one that I would love to see done in the main Marvel line uh, since we haven't ever gotten it any other place than as this rare mail-in exclusive. Meanwhile, back in the 616 Marvel Universe, Eddie Brock sold the Venom symbiote to mobster Don Fortunato, who then gave it to his sniveling son, Angelo. Angelo put up a pretty good fight, but in the end was rejected by the symbiote, abandoning him between buildings, leaving him to fall to his death. But the symbiote would quickly find a new host in Matt Gargan, the Scorpion. Gargan brought out the worst in the alien, committing atrocity after atrocity. If Eddie Brock had turned Venom into a lethal protector, Mac Gargan just made Venom lethal. And that really comes across in this unbelievably horrific figure from 2008 produced by Hasbro. It's interesting, this figure came out in the Spider-Man Classics line, which was really the only six-inch line that Hasbro really had going at that time. Marvel Legends were basically on hiatus, and Hasbro had switched their focus to the three-and-three-quarter-inch Marvel Universe line, but thankfully they continued to produce six-inch figures under the Spider-Man Classics banner, and that's where we got this just terrific scorpion venom. I mean, look at the length of this tongue with the saliva on it. The different eyes, you know, one of the ways that you can tell the difference between a regular venom and a scorpion venom are those red eyes that are there in the middle of the white part. And obviously this extremely detailed and fully articulated scorpion tail. So this thing really does have great movement. It's got hinges at each one of these joints, and it's it's very, very detailed in the sculpt. So this is, you know, from a time when six-inch figures were really not, you know, the, the emphasis at Hasbro, but they managed to crank out one of their very best with this Matt Gargan Scorpion. Now, the Scorpion also served on the Dark Avengers, which was Norman Osborn's team when he had kind of taken over S.H.I.E.L.D. and renamed it as Hammer. And they did make that figure in the Marvel Universe line at the three and three quarter inch scale. You can see that he's much bulkier, much thicker than your typical, you know, Peter Parker black suit Spider-Man, and of course the atrocities committed by Matt Gargan in this suit as one of the Dark Avengers was really meant basically to besmirch the name of Spider-Man and ruin his reputation. But it's cool that we got this version of Matt Gargan as Scorpion as well. Thankfully, the symbiote's next host was a far more noble one. Peter Parker's teenage nemesis turned best friend, Flash Thompson. Flash lost his legs while serving in Iraq. He was given the opportunity to host the alien for the power of good as Agent Venom. The Agent Venom figure was a 2013 exclusive, and a lot of times with the exclusives, they just reuse a bunch of parts, and if that's the case here, they did a great job with it, because they really put a ton of detail into this figure, from the body armor chest plate to the shoulder pads. He has the different wrist gauntlets. Of course, he's got the, the armor plating and the knee pads. He did come with several weapons, including a holstered pistol there. You can see all of the army tech, the hand grenades. You know, something that really does make Flash look like a soldier. And so it, it, it incorporates his army history, his veteran status, 
with the symbiote and how those two came together and really brought the symbiote back to the light. You know, Flash's personality was able to overcome some of the negative that had built up in the symbiote, in the alien, and together they truly did become a hero as Agent Venom. Now, I don't know what is more unlikely. The fact that Flash Thompson became an actual superhero or that he went into space and served as a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. That or the fact that Marvel actually made a space Venom, a Cosmos Venom Build-A-Figure in 2017. And they also made it so well. Look at how clean the lines are on this figure. And it has such an awesome you know, spacefaring, almost like celestial kind of look to it. You know, that head sculpt is very reminiscent of some of the things that you would see from the Celestials. I like the 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 red kind of gold. I guess those are gold eyes that are hidden underneath there. But he has the giant body. I love how tight that paint app is on that Guardians of the Galaxy symbol. This is a terrific figure of a truly heroic time during Venom's history. While Flash was serving as Agent Venom, Otto Octavius had taken over the body of Peter Parker. Attempting to prove himself superior in every way, Otto decided to heal Flash by creating artificial limbs for him. But the separated symbiote latched onto Otto, forming the Superior Venom. Okay, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. This is Peter Parker's body taken over by both Doc Ock and Venom. So this is like a complete, you know, hodgepodge soup of characters all rolled into one action figure of a character that appeared in three issues of the comics. So this is the Superior Venom. So it's the Superior Spider-Man where Doc Ock was inside Peter's head, and we've got the Venom symbiote coming right off of Flash Thompson to take over the body. So it's a pretty sweet figure. I mean, this is the Pizza Spidey body, which I've already said how much is my favorite frame for Spider-Man. It has got some sweet, tight paint apps going on here. And they really bring in the costume designs of both Venom, of course, with the eyes and the teeth, and the superior octopus Spider-Man because of these kind of random web lines. That was something that was a hallmark of Ock's first Superior Spider-Man suit, and they capture that really well. This is not a mistake. Like, these web lines are not random for no reason. They're meant to look like that, and that was exactly how he was portrayed in the comics. He did come with tendrils, with symbiote tendrils coming off. I just don't know where they are, so I'm sorry about that. But for a character that only appeared for a very brief time, that was actually three characters combined into one... That makes one pretty nice action figure. After returning from space, the symbiote bonded with former Army Ranger Lee Price. Price's personality overpowered the alien's will, and together they went on a murderous spree, rebranding Venom as a villain. So I am not 100% certain that this monster Venom Build-A-Figure was meant to represent the Lee Price version of Venom. But for the sake of argument, let's just say it is, because it is such a unique, unique version of the figure with the, the way that the spider emblem is just sort of erratic and, and moving and scattershot all across his chest. He's huge. I mean, this figure is absolutely huge and he's so muscular there's so much sculpting detail down to all the veins that are popping out in his arms of course it has that incredible head sculpt with the ripping jaw that we've seen so many times and the and the gorging teeth but it's just a different look for venom and it's certainly with the the live tendrils and the the swooping of the symbiote around him it's just such a sweet looking figure and Lee Price was not a great Venom. He obviously didn't last very long, but if his long-standing legacy is that we got this figure, I think that counts for something. The penultimate issue of Dan Slott's decade-long run on Amazing Spider-Man was number 800, an 80-page giant which saw Spidey face off against a carnage-powered Norman Osborn, calling himself the Red Goblin. When the combined might of Pete's closest friends wasn't enough, 
Venom joined the fight. But even he couldn't stop the goblin, and suggested that Peter take the symbiote to even up the odds. He reluctantly agreed, and once again donned the alien costume. Tragically, in the ensuing battle, Flash Thompson was killed. But in the end, Peter shed the symbiote and used Norman's overblown ego to defeat him. Which left the alien an opportunity to rejoin with an old friend. Amazing Spider-Man 800 was a milestone issue in more ways than one. Obviously, it was a huge anniversary for the Amazing Spider-Man title, but it's also a comic book in which we got multiple action figures that were coming from a single issue. And while this video is not about Carnage, we would be remiss if we didn't at least take a look at the Red Goblin figure from that issue. You know, here is Norman Osborn being possessed by the Carnage symbiote. It has the same kind of goblin head, but then the Carnage look to it. You have the moving tendrils everywhere. You have this giant tail, which doesn't have a lot of articulation in it, but still for, you know, a unique version of the Green Goblin, this one is pretty special. Now, my favorite from this is when Peter takes the symbiote back. And again, here is Peter in the black suit. Now, this is very reminiscent, obviously, of his original time in the black suit. I do like that they kept the marks on the back of his hand. This is a very, very similar spider emblem, although changed, changed a little bit. But the real hallmark of this suit is that the eyes come off of his mask ever so slightly and it gives him just a little bit of texture just a little bit of pop and pizzazz and it really makes this a unique figure again this one appears to be on the pizza spidey buck my favorite buck for peter parker spider-man but this is a great welcome addition to spidey symbiote family but by the end of this issue the symbiote was right back where it belonged with eddie brock and that brings us to the deluxe Venom, Eddie Brock style. Classic Venom, classic outfit, classic spider emblem, but just mammoth. Just absolutely the definitive version of modern Venom right here. And the great news for you guys is he can be yours. <laughs> Hopefully you caught all those clues so that you can become the owner of this Venom action figure. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave me a comment, and this can be yours. We sent our last giveaway to Bucharest, Romania, so anything is possible. If you really want to get involved with the channel, click that join button. That gives you access to exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. And if your idea of a good time is the combination of comics history and action figures, check out this playlist where we go through the entire comic book history of Spider-Man as told through action figures. So like, comment, and subscribe to Carbon Scoring.